And this is an important factor because when you try to pacify your mind, you are not trying to invent something or to create something new inside yourself. You are simply trying to pacify the amount of thoughts disturbing that peaceful state in order to come back to its initial state. And that makes a big difference because many people, when they start to meditate, they are striving to create peace in their mind. They are fighting against themselves like if they would need to undig something, to plant something new, which is not the case. It is important to find back what we already have inside, this peace, peaceful state of mind. Another important point to understand is that we all have a very similar consciousness with a lot of difference due to our past, due to our <coughs> Uh, education to all various, various influence but the nature of our mind is the same which means that if some people are able to meditate everybody can meditate it's not that some special people can reach meditation and not the other ones. And that is an important point because I, I hear quite often people saying, I cannot meditate. It's not possible for me to meditate. I'm not advanced enough to meditate. This is clearly ridiculous for me because I know that everybody can meditate. It's a matter of will, it's a matter of discipline, it's a matter of motivation. So please remove once from your mind that you cannot meditate, because this is not. It is a matter of how you will direct your motivation into the practice and how you will understand, develop faith, develop strength into your capacity to have a better control over your own mind, a better control over the amount of thoughts which are emerging constantly in your uh, consciousness. A certain amount of our thoughts are the product, the result of thoughts that we have generated in the past. We did think in a certain way which has created uh, a seed potential for some thoughts to arise in that same mind, that same consciousness in the future. So it can happen that while you are not necessarily willing to think in a certain direction, some thoughts arise in your mind, which can be fear, which can be anger. It is important to understand that these type of thoughts are not you. They are emerging within your consciousness on the basis of causes you have accumulated in the past. Understanding this, it is possible to observe that type of thought without to sustain them. What I mean by that, you can recognize that, oh, fear is arising, irritation is arising in my mind. You can see them, you can name them, this type of thought. 
yet you are not obliged to follow them. You are not obliged to focus on them and to develop them. <coughs> At that moment, when you recognize a thought in your mind, you have a choice. The choice to let that thought to leave you, or the thought to jump on it and to seize it. Wherever you place your focus, you place your energy. Focus on a thought and you give it life, you give it strength. Whereas, as any phenomena, it is impermanent, it arises and disappears. Which brings us back to awareness. Awareness is another important concept when we are coming to meditation, when we are coming to spiritual practice in general. Why? Because we are spending most of our day completely unaware of what is happening in our own mind. Whereas it's funny because it is our own mind, after all. The thoughts which are emerging constantly in our mind on the basis of past accumulated causes are appearing within our own house. And the better we become aware of them, the less we will be disturbed by them because we find ourselves angry it does not happen on its own like something external anger starts by a thought of irritation eventually on which we will focus that we will feed that will develop as anger and we did not notice this process. Why? Because we are unaware of what is happening within our own mind. I often compare the practice of meditation with the practice of a sport or the practice of yoga. If at one moment you decide to put your foot behind your ear, this is my favorite asana, you might not, of course, reach that goal immediately, except if you are very supple. It might take a little bit of time before you reach that. But what we know about sport in general, or about physical exercise and yoga, is that if we want to achieve a goal, we have to uh, go along with it on a daily basis without um, too much space between different sessions of practice. So if you want to achieve a complicated asana in yoga, or if you want to do some um, gymnastic or any other sport, you have to train steadily, constantly, with the proper motivation. The same for meditation. You want to have a supple mind, a mind that you can place wherever you want, peacefully, then this has to be done on a very regular basis. The motivation is of course again very important because you know the goal you want to achieve and you are walking towards it slowly by slowly. If you try to place your foot behind your ear immediately, it might end up to be slightly painful if you can achieve it at all. If you expect to be a great meditator from a day to another, it not, might not be that painful, but it might be quite frustrating because you might not. Why? 
because we are used to other patterns of thoughts. We are used to let our minds wild. I would not say free, because the freedom of mind is when you control it, not when it is wild. So we have this pattern of wildness, which we need to um, review and which we need to discipline in order to come to a good meditation. It is a process.